I think lunch is one of the hardest meals to really nail down and get right. And it's the reason why so many people end up resorting to takeout in the middle of the day. But I don't want you spending all of your money on takeout. I want you making delicious homemade lunches that you can transport to wherever you're going that are delicious, but also light so you'll stay energized throughout the day. And most importantly, all of these homemade lunches come together in under 15 minutes. So we're starting off with a dish that I've been trying to crack the 15 minute code on for a while now. And I think I got something that you're all gonna enjoy. We all know this dish right here, chicken and broccoli, one of the most popular takeout items, at least in the US, because sometimes you're just craving those flavors. Your body just needs it, but what your body doesn't need <laughs> is the takeout version. We want a homemade version and we want it quick. And you know, in this series, I try to make pretty much everything completely from scratch. So you might be wondering, how am I gonna make rice under 15 minutes? Impossible? Voila. <laughs> Finally, I figured out how to make rice under 15 minutes and it's pretty damn good. This right here is a pressure cooker or an instant pot. And what I'm gonna do is take two cups of rice, give the rice a quick wash to get off some of that starchy water into the pressure cooker with two cups of water. So that's a one-to-one -one ratio plus a little bit more. And I'm gonna set that on a high pressure cook for four minutes. That's all you need. It's gonna take about three minutes to come up to pressure. Then it's gonna cook at four minutes under pressure. Then I'll release the steam and just let that sit there and it'll be ready to go once the rest of the dish is done. Now, two more things to do very quickly. Get some type of saute skillet, preheating on a low heat, fill up a little saucepan with water. We're gonna blanch our broccoli in here. So just get that on the burn and bring that up to a simmer. So since this is lunch and this dish can definitely be a bit heavy, I'm switching out the chicken for tofu. Plus I have a chicken dish coming later on. I've got some firm tofu here and I'm gonna cut it into about half inch slices. And this stuff still has a lot of moisture. So I'm gonna take a clean dish towel. You can use a paper towel as well. Get it in that dish towel and get as much moisture out of that as possible. Then we're gonna salt and pepper both sides. And at this point my pan is nice and preheated. So I'll get some oil in there and start frying that tofu on one side. I'm gonna chop up my aromatics while Oops, so this just beeped. Our four minutes is up. So what I'll do is I'll release the steam. Boom. And I'll just let that chill out. How you doing? While this is frying, I'm gonna chop up my aromatics. Really simple. Fresh ginger and garlic. Smash. Smash. Slice to the garlic, slice to the ginger. And then I'll dice these together. Running my knife through them until they're super fine. Or fine enough for a 15 minute meal. Reserve that. And we'll work on the broccoli. Slice off the florets. Boom, 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 boom. Small piece, big piece. We'll cut the big pieces in half so they're even with the small pieces. Now about half of this is good stuff. It's kind of like asparagus. There's a point where it gets tough. That's compost or chickens. And I'll just slice around this. I love broccoli stuff. Veggies prepped. All we really need to do is the sauce at this point, but these are ready to be turned. Oh yeah. It's all about that medium low heat. You don't want to burn them. Just nice and crispy. We'll let that cook for another four minutes and we'll work on our beautiful brown sauce. Now disclaimer, do not be discouraged if you don't have one of these pantry ingredients. This right here is by no means traditional, but really a good Chinese brown sauce. It is just some combination of what you have in your pantry. We're gonna go three spoons of soy, two spoons of Chinese cooking wine, two spoons of hoisin, a spoon of honey for some extra sweetness, one spoon of sesame oil. Now it's important to bulk this sauce up a bit. I'm using some chicken stock, quarter cup to a third of a cup. It's something you can't skip out on. Well, I guess you could if you want your sauce to be liquidy. About one spoon of cornstarch. That's gonna thicken everything up when it hits the pan. Boom, there's your brown sauce in like a minute. Okay, now when that sauce is done, these should be perfect. And oh, that's just flipped over to show me that it is perfect. Wow. You can see I've got some residual oil in there. If your pan is dry, add some more oil. But we're gonna fry off that garlic and ginger. And we'll take this, not with one hand like an idiot, right into that water to blanch for like two minutes. Back for more. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. And finally, once that's nice and toasted, right in with our sauce. And that should thicken up pretty quickly. Watch this transformation. Here we go. Boom, look at that. Turn that down, broccoli blanch, nice and green. Slice up our tofu. Quick side note, the first three dishes, I'm gonna be saving one ingredient that is gonna create a leftover final dish. So for this one, one piece of crispy tofu. You'll see that later. Boom. Just need one thing. Let those seeds rain. Oh, good. 
good. We're done. Let's check on this rice. All right, the moment of truth. What do we have under the lid? 15 minute rice. Oh, oh. All right, not bad. Slightly overcooked. I would say take that lid off maybe at 10 minutes. Don't let it steam for that long. I'll take that and I will improve next time, I swear. <laughs> So I've been back on the intermittent fasting, so this is the first thing to hit my belly today. So we've got breakfast. And we've got lunch. And dinner. Should be breakfast, lunch, or dinner. It's a good way to break a fast. My goal with this dish was to create something that was just as flavorful and umami packed as the takeout version, but much lighter. I think I accomplished that, because nothing about this dish right here makes me miss takeout at all. And it's made in 15 minutes. Good stuff. So I like getting outside in between recipes because I need to rejuice a little bit, gain my energy back, plus I can take care of a few chores. And there's a few updates around the house. First one, look at that. <laughs> So there was a huge Oof. walnut tree right here that was leaning towards the house. And it was blocking a lot of sun in this little mini orchard plus the garden back there. Plus it was just causing a mess with the walnuts falling on the house. So I had a company come by and chop this baby down. This is my favorite wood. This is black walnut. You can see this ring of white around the outside. And then this is all that classic walnut color on the inside. On Monday, I have a guy coming over who has a portable milling machine. And we're gonna slice up all all of this walnut here. Now that will give me about, I don't know, 10 years, maybe a lifetime of walnut for me and my dad to turn into furniture, to turn into bowls like this. This isn't walnut, but this is an example of a bowl. So I've got some big plants, but it takes about a year or two to dry. So a little bit of patience on that. Now we're pretty much winterized over here, but there are a few last things I wanna grab for the recipes today. Here's some nice cilantro that actually grows pretty well into the winter. I need that for two of the recipes. I planted a bunch of radish from seed. Pretty small, but they'll be nice and tasty. Here's a good bunch. Should be good for this salad. And this is some purple cabbage. I don't think I'll get cabbage this late into the winter, but I can harvest some of these leaves before the deer eat them. And lastly, totally forgot about this. We've got some wild mint growing on the outside of the bed. That will be perfect for the last recipe. All right, not a bad winter harvest. Out. I would say 99.9% .9 of people throw this stuff away. That's just beautiful organic goodness. You can use this mulch for anything, but right now I'm just mulching out the chicken run. So I was feeling pretty low energy after that first recipe. A little bit of yard work. I'm ready to go. All right, lunch number two. Something I make all the time is a chicken salad. Now I'm not talking a chicken salad with mayo and celery and all that. We're talking a fresh salad with a delicious dressing topped with a crispy piece of chicken. All under 15 minutes. I've done other salad videos, but this recipe is specifically crafted for quickness. Now I'm gonna be using chicken breast because it cooks quickly. Coat it in your favorite seasoning. You can also just use salt or pepper. Shout out dudes, local Long Island represent. This is their flipping the bird. Oh yeah, preheat your pan. Throw it in a bag. And what to smash with. This will work. Hey now that chicken is nice and even and will cook a little quicker. If your spice mix doesn't have salt, of course, salt your chicken. Oil in the pan, get that chicken going. I've got a few tortillas here, three of them. Put them like that, cut little strips. Now we've got chicken, we've got tortillas, so you can see the Mexican theme starting to build. And this avocado dressing is really going to bring everything together. Really simple. From one Kotsky, make sure it's nice and ripe. Garden cilantro, stems and all. Yo! <laughs> Globe on the run. Trying to get this finished before I flip that chicken. One clove of garlic, two limes. Juicy juice. Salt. Where are you? Pepe. A. Time is ticking. Tiny bit of oil. You don't need much because the fattiness of the avi. What else, what else? We'll blend. I think that's it. So this right here is pretty much just a really creamy guac. Turn it into a dressing. I'm just gonna add water. Super flavorful, nice and creamy. One of my favorite quick dressings. Just in time. Ah. That. Now we've got our tortillas. All we have to do is chop up our salad ingredients. Radish from the garden. Rattle through those. Boom. Cucumber. Cut it in those spheres, whatever you call them. So the chicken, if you just push it and it feels nice and firm, should be cooked through. Uh, 
Just let that chill there. We're not gonna cut into that yet. Now all this flavor, boom, boom, boom. Take advantage of that. Strips. If you need more oil, just a tad. Boom, boom, boom. We'll just fry that out. We've got some of these pea shoots. Place those up. Nice crunchy romaine. Shred that. Mix. Ah, damn it. We ran out of fuel. Over to the induction. These definitely need some salt. And we'll just fry these for another two or three minutes until they get crispy. And I'll clean in the meantime. Crispy. So for the last recipe, the mystery recipe, I will be saving a few of these crispy tortilla strips. The rest will go right in there. Now this is rested for a few minutes. Those juices set. I'm gonna cut this into strips one way, turn it, cut it the other way. So I have these nice cubes, beautiful, juicy chicken. It's going right in. Green. Next. Oh, I've talked yeah. about this in the past, but some type of hearty salad like this, definitely my go-to lunch, probably 50% of the days because it's satisfying a lot of different food groups, protein, carbs, fresh veggies, fat from the avocado. But most importantly, it's not gonna weigh you down in the middle of the day, which is why I love something like this. Those crispy tortillas, do not skip that. And I really loved how quickly this one came together. So this next one I've been making a lot recently. Actually last night, I honed it in just a bit more. It's a peanut noodle and it works great as dinner, but also a wonderful leftover dish for lunch the next day. And to get this dish rolling, we've got to do two quick things. Fill up a saucepan with water for your noodles. Get that on the heat. And then any type of saute pan will do. This is a 10 incher. Get that on like a medium low. All right, now let's make this sauce, which is so easy and very forgiving because all of these flavors are powerful. Obviously your peanut butter, first ingredient. Three fat tablespoons of that. I've got some sambal right here. Ugh. There we go. Any chili paste will do. This is loaded with flavor though. Really nice balanced spice. About three tablespoons of that, depending on your heat preference. And then soy, you're salty. One, two, three. Some type of sweetener, I'm using honey. I think one tablespoon will be fine. Look at that, just slip right off. Sesame oil, strong stuff. So just one of that. Now we definitely need the tang. I'm using a lime. You can use any type of vinegar. Rice wine vinegar will work great. Whatever you have on hand. Now to make this really simple, ow, lime juice in my cut. I'm gonna use ginger and garlic and I'm just gonna grate it right in. One clove of garlic, pretty much the same amount of ginger. And then finally, we just have to thin it out a little bit with some water, maybe six tablespoons. Boom, boom, boom. Twist that up. It's really that simple. Now this flavor right here, Ooh, that's got a serious kick from that ginger and garlic. This right here is a fine dipping sauce, but I do like cooking it down a little bit just to mellow out and mend all of those flavors together. So we'll just put that to the side and we'll start working on the pasta, <laughs> the noodles, the whatever this is. Like all of these recipes, the veggies are super customizable. At least that's what I try to push. Or you can just do what I'm doing. Totally up to you. I've got these button mushrooms here, cremini mushrooms, whatever you want to call them. Sometimes. I'll just kind of break them up right into the pan. I don't even cut them. Obviously, they're all different sizes, different textures, and I like that. Get those going. Remember these purple cabbage leaves? Give these a roll like a cigar. And chiffonna. Boom. So I'll just cook these for about another minute until they get some nice color. Then I'll go in with my cabbage. All right, let's talk nude skis. I've got some Soba. I love the combination of soba noodles with a peanut sauce, but the sauce is so versatile. Any noodles are gonna be great. Got some rice noodles right here. Those would work. Ramen noodles, any type of wheat noodle. Whatever floats your boat, my friends. These only take four minutes to cook, so I'm gonna hold off on them until I would say the sauce goes into this pan. You can see some nice brownage there, some crispy bits. That's what I'm looking for. Purple cabbage leaves. Hiya! Hit it with some salt. Love how those are frying up. So what I'm gonna do is reserve all of these veggies. So in my case, four minutes to cook the noodles, four minutes to cook the sauce. Here we go. Just a little water in the bowl too to get all of that residual out of the bowl. Nothing goes to waste. And just put that on a low heat. Start slowly reducing it. Oh, the smell is incredible. Talking about. Now there's one more thing this dish needs. And I think it's so vital to the balance of everything because that sauce is super creamy. It's fatty with the peanut butter. We need to freshen it up. I've got some scallions, some of that 
cilantro from the garden. I'm talking like a lot of herbs to top this dish. It is so vital, do not skip. Cut off the ends and just slice and dice. Got a nice sun ray right on my face coming in. Just about four minutes, I'll check one of these. Perfect. Taste this. Yes, much more mellow. Everything is toned down. That's what we're looking for. There's one thing I want to do. For our last recipe from this dish, I'll be stealing some peanut sauce. Can you guess what I'm making? Should be a little more obvious at this point. Just enough for a dipper. Look at these beautiful soba noodles. If you get some water in there, that's totally fine. Think of it like pasta water. Veggies. Now soba noodles can be pretty delicate. You don't want them breaking apart on you. So just be gentle in this phase. Heat on a medium low. Oh my God. God, that looks amazing. I mean, is that not just a luxurious, creamy looking, like Alfredo sauce? <laughs> just slightly more brown. All right, let's plate this baby up. I'm serious, my friends. Let those herbs rain. It's gonna really balance this dish out. Freshness. Peanut noodle served cold as well. Great lunch. Good dinner, whatever you want. It certainly feels like a pasta experience. Really good sauce. Love the lime in there. Something about the buckwheat in the soba noodles, just, ah, it's the perfect balance with the peanut butter. This is the type of dish, it almost confuses your mind. Like it takes a few bites because you think you're eating pasta, especially when it's served warm. And then after like three or four bites, it's just the greatest thing ever. All right, I'm gonna eat this and I'll meet you back for the final mystery dish. So did you figure it out yet? The final recipe. We've got crispy piece of tofu, check. Crispy little tortilla pieces, peanut sauce. Maybe these fresh ingredients give it away. We're making summer rolls. You can throw anything fresh in here and get a delicious summer roll, but these ingredients just happen to work out perfectly. Well, this actually, that's a wild card, the crispy tortilla strips. I've never tried that in a summer roll, but I thought I'd give it a try. Maybe it add some nice crunch. So this is as easy as it gets. Most of the preparation is done. If you don't don't have a piece of crispy tofu. You can just go straight fresh yeast or throw in some leftover meat or some steak. Other protein sources are excellent. Really the key is having a delicious dipping sauce like this. So let's quickly prep these ingredients. Start off with some cucumber. Slice it so it fits nicely inside the summer roll. Thin slices like this. Turn it. Yeah. I like getting out a plate and just organizing all of my ingredients. Where's the peeler, my friend? I think I have a peeler somewhere. You know what? I thought I had a peeler, but I can't find it. But this carrot, pretty fresh. As long as it's washed, it'll be fine. Same size on the carrot. Slices, stack. Tofu, thin strips. That's nice, you can see that crust. Tofu on. These are some pea shoots I used for the Salad, just slice those right in half, add them to the action. This is some wild mint grown outside. Any herbs will do, cilantro is great as well. Crispies, and then I've got a bag of just some random lettuce leaves. Two of these. I'm ripping off the bottom pieces of the stem, which can mess up the rolling because they're a little tough. And there you go. Fill up a bowl with cold water. Now there's really only one thing you need to know when you're wrapping a rice paper like this. Take your water and just give it a quick dip. It's not a soak in the water. It's just, oh, that one's ripped. We can get rid of that. Round two. Just turn it in the water so it's completely coated. Take it out. You can kind of give it a little shake. You're not soaking them in water. This is gonna slowly start to soften with just that dip, so that's all you need. Carrots, let's start that over with lettuce on the bottom. Oops. Carrots and cucumber, tofu strips, some crispies, some pea shoots, a little bit of mint on top. I think that's everything. We wrap over like this. Pull in, pull, 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 pull. Tuck in the corners. Continue to tuck in the corners while while rolling up. Tuck, 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 tuck. Little hole there from the tortillas, but that's all right. I'm actually gonna cut it right there. Probably gonna roll three or four more to get a nice lunch. All right, I got a bit lazy, plus it's just me. Three will do. And slice, slice. Wow. Peanut sauce. Oh, wish I had some peanuts in there. And then just stack those around the outside. That looks pretty nice. To be honest, I don't know why I cut them on an angle. They work a lot better if you just cut them straight. You can see it's starting to sort of fan open a little bit. So straight cut, much better. Mm. Not for a second does that crispy tortilla feel out of place. It's a great textural element. You could do that with like a little crispy wonton strip too. I find that lunchtime is, for me, the best time to consume raw ingredients because they 
burn quickly. They don't weigh you down. They just give you good energy so you can continue on doing your work, whatever you're doing. And a summer roll is one of the best ways to consume raw ingredients. Like trick yourself into consuming all of these raw ingredients. You throw a little peanut sauce in there wrapped in this rice paper. It's just one of the easiest ways to eat a salad and they're so tasty. Again, these are some of my go-to lunches, but they work great as dinners as well. If you want to see more 15 minute dinners, eight more recipes right here, all crafted to come together in 15 minutes. That's it, my friends.